Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ilyas from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Mansera. In today's presentation, we will discuss theoretical sampling. So, what is theoretical sampling? Why is theoretical sampling used or in what sort of conditions theoretical sampling is used and then how is it used? These are the questions that I would like to briefly respond to in this uh, brief presentation. So let's see, beginning with the um, what question. So the first question is what it is. Um, well, this is something that relates to uh, the particular kind of sampling that generally happens in, um, in studies with more inductive um, or bottom-up approaches or methodologies, um, mainly qualitative researches, but more specifically, um, um, uh, more specifically, grounded research approaches. Generally, as we know, sampling uh, in uh, most quantitative researches um, and experimental researches, sampling is done in the very beginning of the research process. And mostly, um, sampling is um, in many cases required as part of the research proposal, um, in, especially in student uh, uh, researches and student theses. Um, this is the kind of sampling, um, theoretical sampling, is something that happens, generally happens during the data collection process. So it is not something that is, that is pre-decided before the formal data collection process. So the first characteristic of this particular type of sampling is that it happens during the data collection process rather than before the data collection or before the uh, formal beginning of the research process. The second characteristic of it is that it actually follows inductive approaches. So studies that come up with inductive approaches um, such as I mentioned in the beginning, um, such as uh, uh, researches that follow uh, grounded um, approaches or inductive approaches um, actually follow theoretical sampling. And um, so grounded theories are specifically associated with theoretical samples the next characteristic of theoretical samples is that it's a kind of, it follows cyclic uh, process or back and forth process. So researchers who follow, um, who adopt the theoretical sampling procedures um, initially, um, actually initially uh, select some participants and then they collect data from those participants. They come back and analyze that data and on the basis of that analysis, um, they come up with uh, certain questions that they think will be explored by um, selecting uh, other people or bringing other people into the sample. For example, they might have questions that come up those questions as a result of those questions, they get certain data or certain findings. And related to that data or those findings, they want, um, they are interested to actually explore those in further detail from the perspective of people who might have different views on, the, on those particular themes or, uh, or ideas. And so um, they go back into, the researchers go back into the field and collect um, more data. Um, and so they are actually adding to the initial sample or maybe they, they are adding different people to the initial sample. As the theory builds, 
So it's not so it's called theoretical sampling for a reason. The reason is that during this um, sampling process, uh, the researchers are actually critically looking at the findings and they are developing theories. And so they are creating theories rather than testing theories in the field that generally happens in most quantitative researches. And again, as I said in the beginning, qualitative studies are studies uh, that generally are more inductive in approaches and so theoretical sampling will be something that will be more relevant to qualitative studies, especially qualitative studies that, that actually come up with grounded approaches or approaches where the, the, the research process is actually grounded in the data that is coming from the empirical part of the research process. Why is it that theoretical sampling is adopted? Um, or what are the conditions in, um, or what are the, the strengths of theoretical sampling? So the first one is obviously the flexibility that it brings with itself. Generally, in the pre-planned um, samples that are associated with more quantitative studies, there is less flexibility in terms of change in the sample uh, in the sample um, as a result of the increasing insight that researchers um, uh, might have in response to the the data that is coming in in response to the analysis that they are conducting but theoretical samples actually provide the kind of flexibility where you can make changes to the samples, you can add to the sample, or you can actually reduce the sample that you have previously thought about, and you can collect data from other or different type of, of people. And so as a result, um, this is something, uh, this sample is something that goes with, with the qualitative research, especially grounded uh, researches, which have more flexible designs as compared to more quantitative studies. Again, um, this is something, the, uh, the, the usefulness of theoretical sampling is uh, because with the increasing insights of the researchers related to a particular topic that they are exploring as more and more data is coming and they are analyzing it is it is that these actually give increasing insights to the researchers and so they keep on developing the theory and substantiating um, their findings and in some cases they might the the, the data that is coming from the um, new participants that that have been included in the sample in some cases, that might find, that might be challenging the findings from the previous um, sample or from the previous participants uh, included in the sample. Um, the next important point is that because of which this is something that is used is 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 because it uses a bottom up approach. Um, in other words, bottom-up approach actually means that you are not um, testing theory uh, through the data that is coming to you, but actually you are developing th theory um, through the data that, that is coming and the researcher is continuously analyzing that data and building theory. And the last one is, um, last characteristic of it is that um, the, the theoretical sample actually ultimately leads to the saturation of the data. In other words, no new, no, no, no new insights are coming, no new um, angles are being added to uh, the, the topic that, that is being researched. And so, uh, when saturation comes, that actually 
um, is the end of the sampling process and the data collection process. So this is the kind of, we can see a cyclic process. Um, although theoretical sampling is quite interesting and it is something that is, that actually is quite um, um, useful in, in the re realistic uh, uh, some, uh, meaning because more because this actually makes the research process more alive and more dynamic but at the same time um, this is something that generally is difficult uh, to use by by student researchers uh, this is this method is basically more suitable for senior researchers and researchers who have um, adequate knowledge of the of how to actually uh, deal with challenges and uh, and changes during the the process of during the the, the active process of the the research so generally junior researchers or student researchers are maybe may not be expected to actually adequately handle the very flexible design and the very intricate design of uh, of uh, theoretical sampling so um, although it's not impossible generally students and and um, research students are uh, might be advised to actually go for more stable uh, research design because most um, MPhil PhD studies or research studies in general are uh, bound in time and space and resources and because of the um, very flexible nature of this this part of the use of this particular sampling and this particular data collection process and analysis processes, it might not be advisable for uh, junior researchers or, or researchers who, uh, who have to actually complete their studies, um, uh, such as student researchers, in a, par in, in a particular period of time. Um, so this will be a quite exciting to use, but um, caution, uh, is there and so there should be the the the, you know, the researchers um, are advised actually to if, if they are interested to adopt theoretical sampling is to actually take the advice of their seniors and especially their supervisors so I hope this brief discussion uh, might have clarified some of the uh, idea some of the questions related to the the what and why and how of theoretical sampling but as always if you have questions and comments and if you can add to the discussion on this particular sampling um, strategy or actually research strategy you are welcome to ask those questions and to give those comments in the comment section Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye.